All I'm trying to find out, I don't care about impeachment, okay? I don't care about kids getting eaten in a pizza shop. I don't care about Podesta. I don't care about anything else. All I'm trying to find, I don't even care about Trump right now. All I'm trying to find out is for you, if I can give you examples of things that Trump has said, if that would rise to the level of inciting a riot. That's all I'm curious about because I don't know what the answer to that question is right now. So it makes it really hard to go forward in the conversation. That's all I'm trying to okay, figure out right and now. I, and what I'm saying is when we see things that were obvious, more incitement, obvious, more direct actions that were more incitement of violent or riots that occurred on the other side and you or the more importantly the people in positions of power didn't take it that way that that proves that this is a political process you know, and, not and you know what rob i'm going to give you the cheat code here here's how you would totally own me on that argument so you gave me three points i think or two points for what would consider as incitement to riot now let's say that we walk through all three of those and then i give you evidence from trump and by the end of that you agree with all three now it would appear as though i've won the argument i said oh well look he met all three legs of your test then what you would say is, well, hold on, Destiny. While Trump may have met and satisfied the three legs of this test, I can give you examples of Democrats that not only met those three different tests, they exceeded it in every single sense of the word. That's what you would do instead of trying to point for one part of this and then talk about impeachment that has absolutely nothing to do with the conversation. So why don't we see if... Please, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. So well, let's just see if, if what Trump said meets rises to your level of incitement to right. And then if it does, and then it seems like maybe I've owed you, maybe then you'll own me and you'll say, well, look, Democrats have actually done, have actually met all of these qualifications on their own and they've exceeded what Trump has done. So why don't you, Destiny, call for their impeachment? That would, right? That's what we would do, right? Like Destiny can shirk this all he wants. Uh, he says, yeah, you're, you're right. I'm lying. I understand the need to approach this with humor because you were wrong. You were wrong. About Cuomo hiding bodies in the water? For, you said it would be impossible. You implied it would be impossible for Cuomo to, quote, hide these bodies because he would have had to hide them in the ocean or something. And you were wrong. Well, because it sound, initially it sounded like you were saying, Rob, come on. Can you, Rob, can you, you chill? Can you chill? The reason why I said that yes, is because initially you made it sound like he was actually hiding deaths, not miscounting them. And because of the other admittedly conspiratorial thoughts that you have i'm sorry that i made the biggest assumption maybe when you said he was hiding the, the deaths you didn't actually mean he was actually hiding the deaths you meant he was misclassifying them we can go back and listen oh, to I the thought maybe i misheard it's you know what it's entirely possible i misheard but when i heard you say that the thought that i heard was that you were saying that he was hiding the actual death count and, and i don't know how that's no, possible that literally hiding bodies that was the joke I meant, Anthony, I meant worse than that. I meant, of course, he was counting the total number of deaths. He was just skewing who could be blamed of it by intentionally discarding where those deaths occurred. And we now know from his assistant that the reason he was doing that was he was afraid that he would get blamed in a Department of Justice investigation. So we literally have a leader, by the way, that Dr. Fauci said was the leader we should exemplify most as far as governors, that was hiding the amount of deaths that occurred directly from his policy to the tune of 14,000, or I don't know, it's somewhere 12,000 something odd that they're now saying, we'll see if- Wait, that's, increased. wait, it was like, it was like 3,000 deaths to be fair and frank. That's all you want me to pull up the day. Wasn't it, wasn't it, wasn't it, wasn't it, they initially claimed that it was like 12,400, but the real number was like 15,600, I thought? That was my reading. That is true. That is exactly. But they were intentionally withholding the amount of deaths that occurred and that it was a direct result of their policy. And so they, the reason that was given, according to the New York Times, not Rob, the conspiracy theorist, was they didn't want that evidence to be used against them in an investigation. Okay, to be clear, for, now, I don't know, Koimu might have fucked up, okay, I don't know. But to be clear, I don't believe that was the argument that they had said, okay, that, that Koimu's own person had said, that the... Uh, Miss DeGrassi or whatever. Fuck, I don't remember the name. Okay. My understanding is that their response was that since they were struggling to get the accurate data to the federal government, they did that in an incredibly timely manner, but they lagged a lot getting that data to the state legislature. That was my understanding. That was. That's what she said, but even the New York Times disagrees. If that argument's true, why didn't we just find out about these 3,000 additional deaths till like this week? Because they that said that they turned that in. Well, it sounds like we found out about it because they said they turned the, in, in the information last week. No, it sounds like it wasn't timely. It sounds no, like I, I it agree. It doesn't like, seem like six months doesn't seem timely. Of course not. Right. And then her initial statement was, we were worried this could be used against us politically or through a legal investigation. Now, okay, you Rob, Rob, this, real quick, real quick. Okay, just because you keep saying the statement, okay, this is my big problem with you, is that you'll take a statement like that and you'll craft a huge thread of it. When you say they were worried it could have been used in an investigation, okay, when I talk to cops... I'm worried that anything I say is going to be used against me. That doesn't mean that I'm automatically guilty. It might mean that I'm just being careful to prepare what I'm talking about. So I, now you, it could be the case that when they say they were worried about it,
it, that meant that they were intentionally hiding data. Or it could be the case that when they said they were worried about it, what they're actually saying is they were being careful to prepare the correct data so that things are being classified correctly. Because a lot of people have had a lot of issues with how they classify coronavirus-related deaths. I don't know which one it is, but your statement on its own, there's not sufficient evidence to say that they were maliciously hiding data. But it is, and I could prove that you have a double standard, because let me ask you person to person, as you asked me earlier. Okay, yeah. So if Donald Trump's team, if Donald Trump's team had admitted, well, we were afraid to actually release the accurate figures because we thought that it could be used against us in an investigation, would you have taken the criteria? Sounds reasonable. They could have just been that they were being precautious like I would be. Or would you say, this is fucking outrageous? If they were afraid to release the actual figures... Let's see if Donald Trump. So when we say actual figures, we're saying about the classification for how a coronavirus death occurred. I mean, I want to say that I wouldn't have made I don't think I would have cared that much about it in terms of the classification. For, now, if they were hiding the actual figures themselves, I probably would have been upset about that. Like in terms of like how many people actually exactly what happened. wait. No, 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 no. When I say the actual figures, I mean, like the actual total number of people dead to the coronavirus. I probably would be upset. But in terms of like how like if the deaths were classified for where people die, I don't I don't know. I can't think of any. I'm trying to think of an example of how the federal government would even be in charge of doing that or would do that. But it's clear that the, this was numbers that could have been indictments of Cuomo. As he was getting Emmys, as he was being appraised by Fauci, these were literally numbers that could have been indictments on his policies. And instead, we saw that Cuomo was blaming the federal government. So it's not as if just like, oh, well, he didn't hide the numbers totally, so it's okay. He hid the numbers specifically that could have been used to impugn his decisions. Do you think that Rob, was going muted. to be? Rob, Rob, so you sa you're saying that Cuomo directed uh these hospitals how to count these deaths are you saying yes. that he was personally involved yes that's what his assistant said that they made the conscious decision that they would not release the accurate figures because they thought that the doj would be investigating that's obstruction of justice period well i guess we'll see if they do the probe from the doj we'll see if the yeah yeah sure. uh, maybe the biden administration <laughs> Maybe the Biden administration will take up the cause, right? Well, we don't need the Biden administration to do it. Now, your mind might be a little bit fuzzy because you're used to four years of Trump, but the, the DOJ isn't supposed to work the direction of the president like that. If there's something yeah, to be investigated... The man, the man, like uh, Eric Holder said of Barack Obama, I'm sure they'll go if the, if the If the DOJ was as partisan as you said it was... Rob, then that would mean that Barr wouldn't have come out with scathing indictments of Trump's behavior by being Trump's own appointee, so... I love talking about people's views. So my argument is, which you call me a conspiracy theorist, that the left, the left-right paradigm or the Republican-Democrat paradigm is a farce. That it's really establishment versus non-establishment. And you say, well, because Barr, a uh, Republican, then it's clear that he would have done X, Y, Z. It's bullshit. Everyone here, and you know this as well. You know that the chances of the DOJ under a Biden administration investigating uh, Cuomo, a fellow Democrat, is far less than if it was a Trump administration. At Trump. What are you talking you know, about? Well, first of all, when Democrats are willing to kick people like Al Franken, like out of the Senate for 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 the stuff that happened to him? Like, what, are you going to seriously try to say that I don't think a Democrat would, would investigate another, like, Democratic governor for something like this? I think, of course, they would. You could cite one example of Al Franken, which, by the way, let me, like, honest to God, I don't think Al Franken should have been kicked out of the Senate. I believe in innocent for proven guilty, and that was bullshit. But they gave that scout because they knew that if Al Franken got kicked out, that seat would go to a Democrat. They're not actually going to do something that could cost them politically, like taking out one of their biggest figures, like Cuomo, who just received an Emmy and is told by Fauci to be the premier person as far as governors that we should listen to. Like, I mean, Destiny, come on, you're- Wait, yeah, hold on, to be clear, I, oh shit, hold on, I gotta, I have to do this, wait, I gotta do this real quick, okay, because I'm trying to be more, I'm trying to be more rhetorically effective in 2021, okay, especially okay. for people like you, okay, so it's good practice. So, nothing you've said so far has any merit whatsoever. So, all you've done is you've given me a very loose collection of descriptive facts that I agree for the most part are true. It seems like, New, well, it seems to be almost for certain Absolutely. that New York State seemed to have misreported the people that died um, in, in um, old person's homes or in nursing facilities, that seems to be the the case I, I haven't seen like a rebuttal of that yet but the idea that they did this to intentionally misrepresent something um in order to score brownie points with trump the idea of the further though a crazy idea that they've done this intentionally with putting old people in nursing homes so that once they die they could score points against trump these things are meritless you've provided no evidence of this and the broad appeal to well i just don't think anything will be investigated because all of our institutions are failing and all of our institutions are, are not partisan but it's actually like classes all the establishment versus not establishment I, i'm sorry but that's just like a, a thing in your head that you have no proof of like that's just a nice story like i can sit here and tell you an equally an equally likely story that the government is actually controlled by reptiles who have a vested interest in keeping all of us oppressed and thinking that the government is made by humans i have about as much evidence for my conspiracy as you do for yours 
and, and, and if I be true? You are willfully ignorant and you're willfully bullshitting people that you think that a Biden administration is going to pursue this as aggressively as a nonpartisan or a Republican administration. What nonpartisan so, administration can there be? It's Republicans and Democrats. Hey, listen, I gave you a chance to give your sake. The, the truth of the matter is this. If this happened under a Trump administration, there is no fucking way you would have gave him the same benefit of the doubt that you're giving Cuomo. In fact, you literally just argued on the debate panel that you think Trump, although you wouldn't support impeachment, that you think Trump incited violence. So you speak into what you think the mentality wait, why do you, can you, wait, wait, hold on. Can you stop bringing up like totally, totally irrelevant stuff? Wait, can you stop bringing up? Can you stop bringing up you stop, give me a chance to respond. Right. No, I don't want. I don't want to do the like when you bring up like fifty-two branching topics because then we're just going to be screaming at each other for, like twelve hours. Don't. It has to do with the fact that you're being willfully disingenuous. Willfully because disingenuous you know over what? Because if you know if this was Trump the numbers, you wouldn't have said, "Well, maybe he did it for legitimate reasons." Have you ever said that Trump was to blame for all the deaths under COVID? The Trump is to if blame. I so I don't think Trump is solely to blame. I think he has a lot of responsibility for how we handled, it, of course. But I've also given Trump credit where credit is due. The quantum speed program or whatever, or the quantum whatever the fuck thing was, I think was a really good idea. Okay, that's good. But I, I mean, you're just full of shit. I mean, about no one, what? I think you know, and I think you're the people listening on your channel know that you're full of shit. If Tr if we found out that one of Trump's top aides said, yeah, Trump intentionally withheld the, the evidence of how many people died as a result of his policies because we were afraid about an investigation, you would be all over it. I, listen, you know what? I'm going to give you, Rob, I'm trying really hard right now. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt because you know what? A lot of left-leaning people would say that. But if you go and you sneak into my stream chat sometime when I'm not there in my subreddit, one of the things that I actually said continuously, especially over the last two years, is when some new shit gets reported about Trump, usually the first question I ask is, did Trump do something really fucked up here, or is this normal presidential shit that we're just hearing about now because it's like standard practice, but because it's Trump, people are reporting on more? I ask that question pretty significantly and pretty often. If you have heard me, not imagined a criticism, but if you've heard me make a criticism of Donald Trump that you think is unfair, then I'm welcome to, to hear that complaint or that criticism. I do think that Trump bears a large responsibility for the flop in handling the coronavirus. And if you want to talk about that, we can. But this idea, like, the idea that you are impugning me right now for a hypothetical response I would have to a scenario that never happened based on things you've never seen me say is like, I don't know how I'm supposed to respond to that. Really bullshit. Wait, That's which part is not... bullshit? What? Like, because it, have a good night, guys. Who wins? All right. Trump for an incitement to riot when he literally said be peaceful seems to be quite. Stop. Clear. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, right, Rob, Rob, Rob. Can I, I want to ask you questions. I just want to ask you questions, okay? Why do you think I believe that Trump incited a riot? What do, you, what do you think I would say? So somebody asked Destiny in a closed room, okay, not on stream, and like, Destiny, why would you say that Trump incited a riot? What do you think my response to that would be? What kind of things would I say? I think you would say something to this effect, that because he released disinformation that he knew that it would agitate people, so he knew what the likely response of that would be. Cor correct, yeah. You're, you're, right. you're very, very, yeah. So then why, wait, so you, wait, wait, so you answered that question correctly. Okay, you did. You right. nailed it. Congratulations. But why is it that when you just accused me of saying that Trump said it right, why did you just bring up like the one thing that he said at the end of his speech? That's not the issue that I'm because, mad at. The problem is all of the disinformation before that. So why wouldn't you bring that up then? Because you're not looking at literally what he said. You're delving into his psychology. So when it comes to Cuomo, you're again delving into his psychology and saying, well, I assume the reason that he intentionally withheld data was for good reasons. It wasn't nefarious reasons. So when someone that you ideologically agree with does something that's fucked up, you say, well, I assume their intentions were good. But despite the words that Donald Trump literally said, you say, I assume their intentions were bad. Okay, what have I ever done to assume Donald Trump's intentions? You just said that you assumed that his intention was to incite a riot. Okay. Despite wait. his words literally wait. saying Let's be, wait, wait, let's be really clear here. I've never spoken uh, to his intentions. I never said that he intended to, to incite a riot. And when exactly. I asked you, wait, sorry, what's up, JSK? No, no, I was just saying exactly. Nobody said that. Yeah, and, and then when I asked you, what would I say for, for what Donald Trump did to incite a riot? You didn't say destiny behind closed doors. You would have said Donald Trump intended to incite a riot. What you said was destiny. You would have said he released disinformation that he knew would agitate people. That I do agree with, but that has nothing to do with his intentions to incite a riot or not, right? So you don't think incitement implies intention? Um, whether or not he intended to do it is not really something I talk. It's really hard to know, like the intentional state of somebody. My issues are going to be material. That he, what? But isn't that the problem with claiming that someone incited? So if you just say no. someone said something off and they committed an action, like do you don't see the slippery slope of how we could say anyone who ever said anything that could have pissed someone off to go do something shitty incited it? Like clearly, do you're you think? Do you, well, here's a question I have for you. Okay, stop. 
Don't stop screaming at me, okay? Number one. Number I'm two. Sorry. Okay. So question, okay? I'm surprised so, you guys are still here. Sure. I yeah. don't know why. Okay. Yo, this I'm is good. Okay. No, I'm, so I'm curious. So do you think it is possible for somebody to incite a riot without actually saying like go kill somebody? Do you think that's possible? Yes. Okay. So I'm curious, and I'm sure you can see where these arguments are going, so answer carefully. What types of things would somebody have to say, or what conditions in your mind would somebody have to create to incite a riot without actually saying, go kill X, Y, Z? Would have to say that the stakes were so high that if you didn't do this, it would be terrible. They would have to imp imply that, you know, there is something, uh, they have to like wink and nod to like, you should go do something, you should, uh, that there's no diplomatic process that could take place or no, uh, you know, verbal process that could take place that this is a last resort. Rob, do you think, wait, do you think overthrowing democracy and stealing elections equates to that? Or, no. Or, okay, so, okay, I love everything you said, okay? So someone would have to say that the stakes were so high that if you didn't do this, it would be terrible. Now, right. now I'm not going to address any other part of this. Don't you think Trump saying over and over again that you're losing your country, doesn't that kind of sound like the stakes are pretty high? But the difference is, like, the problem is if we say that that's the threshold, then we can see the exact no, no. same thing. Wait, wait, no, 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 wait. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I agree with you. That's not enough. But I'm not complicitous with my answer, so let okay. me, let me give an answer, right? Like, the problem is how could we say anything different about the people that talked about your country is racist, it's systemically racist, so you need to go fight. Okay, we can go talk about those. Yeah, we can talk, we can, sure, we can talk about those next if you want to, but I'm focused right now on Trump, okay? So someone would have to say- just real quick clarify, then my point is, if we're not in position, not me and you, like you're more influential than me, but still you're you're just someone that's like an entertainer that's making a buck, that's cool, right? Like you're not in the halls of Congress or anything like that. That's the real important part. The people that are actually controlling these institutions, what was their reaction? So when Trump did this, their reaction was, you know, we need to put 25,000 armed troops in DC. We need to uh, impeach Trump. We need to, possibly start 9-11 insurrection committees to go after Trump supporters or other such people. That was the reaction. But when we saw the exact same type of rhetoric lead to people riding over and over and over again, they were the exact opposite position. They said, we don't want troops on the street. That would okay, be authoritarian. All I'm, 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 not, I'm not going enough to any of that, okay? You gave me a couple conditions that I thought were interesting to explore about whether or not these conditions were met. So you said someone would have to say that the stakes were so high that if you didn't do something, it would be terrible. So one of Trump's quotes were, and we fight, we fight like hell, and if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. Do you think that that's saying that the stakes are high? I'm just asking if you think the stakes are high there. <laughs> Is it if I could just give me 10 seconds? It is, but that's a condition of what it would cause, but not a condition of it, it proves that it would happen, right? It's a necessary condition, but not a condition. Necessary, but not sufficient. I agree. Okay. If that's all he said, sure. So then I just say, and again, my wait. position's been consistent. Okay. And I've then, said that on the left shouldn't be charged with incitement or shouldn't be impeached when they, they did, like, did, let me ask you a question. Wait, I don't, wait, why are we, I just want to. I just want to explore your necessary and sufficient right. conditions for a riot. That's I'm not being duplicitous. I'm giving you straightforward answers. So let me ask you a question. Do you think that if Donald Trump would have came out and said after the riots in January 6th, I'm, uh, I, here's a bail fund to bail out some of these rioters, do you think that would have been outrageous? If Trump would have tried to bail out rioters that appeared to be uh, engaged in an insurrection against the government, yeah, I think that would have been outrageous. Okay, so, but you don't think that's the problem with Kamala Harris? If, Ka if Kamala Harris started a fund to bail out people that were convicted of like arson, I would think that would be absolutely outrageous. That's different. That, you're changing the goalpost because it's no, not No, stop. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry if we're saying convicted, okay? W whatever. If they were locked in holding, okay? If Trump were to start a fund for bailing people out that were at the protests, that weren't actually in the Capitol, but were at the protests... Yeah, whatever. I don't care. People started a fund to, to bail out a written house. You know what? Whatever. I don't care. Okay. Now, if Trump would have been involved in doing a fund to bail out the people that actually broke into the Capitol building, then I would say that's really bad. Now, if Kamala Harris made a fund to help people that were like arrested for breaking curfew or something, then whatever. But if Kamala Harris was in charge of a fund to bail out people that were like charged with like arson or violent crimes, I would have a huge problem with that almost to the same level as, as for Trump. Yeah.
Okay, so let me say this. I'll take your word for this, although I'm skeptical. And let me Wait, say this. Wait, why There's, are you skeptical like, when I've come out so hard against people rioting against private businesses? Well, you didn't. You literally said on my stream, I can play the audio for you, that you're okay with people rioting against the government. Yeah, you literally that, but that's not that. private businesses. Exactly. Well, okay. So when they attacked a police precinct. Yeah, if people want to ride against public institutions, I think it's their right to do right. so. Right, and Kamala Harris started a bail fund for that. So why would that be acceptable, but Donald Trump, when people ride it against the Capitol, be non-acceptable? Be careful. Just because I said that it's okay to riot against the public government doesn't mean I think that people in government should be in charge of bailing out rioters. I, when I say rioter or protester, I actually mean something very different there, okay? If you want to bail out a protester that was arrested for breaking curfew or something, that's fine. Bailing out a rioter, I think, is a lot different. It sets a very scary precedent. Wait. But listen, this is why I think, let me not say disingenuous, that's not fair to you, but do you really think that Kamala Harris knew that the bail fund that she was supporting was only going to people that didn't actually engage in the actual riots? In fact, we see that the literal result was people that did engage in violence were released. So you think that Kamala Harris, when she pushed this bail fund, she understood that that bail fund was only going to people that were arrested, not for burning down the precinct, but for other reasons. That's your claim? <clears throat> What do you think I, okay, what do you think I would say to this, Rob? I think you would say, yeah, if, if you were being honest, I think you'd say this. It was really fucked up that Kamala Harris did that. That's what I think you would say. Okay, what have I said so far about whether or not Kamala Harris had a, had a donation fund for people that were involved in violent riots? What would I say I would think about that? Again, if you were being honest. No, no, not what I was being honest. I've already said it in this conversation. I said I wouldn't support that. So why do you, you keep asking me? You're, you think that that riot fund could have been, that bailout fund could have been for people that weren't engaged in the riot, therefore it was okay. No, I don't know anything about that fund. I've never made a statement about what that fund supports. My guess is if you have a fund like that, it's probably going to support a whole bunch of fucking people, including people right. that I wouldn't agree That's with. That's my point. That's exactly my point. She knew that too. You don't think Kamala Harris knew that? Yet she actively, after riots which went against governmental buildings and burned them down. She went public and said, we should, here's a fund to bail them out. You don't, how is that not incitement, but Donald hey, Trump saying, peacefully, we I, went I don't away know from, we went away from like, whether Trump should be accountable for this to talking about Kamala Harris. Well, yeah, of course, it because this is yeah. how he tries to like route everything back. Cause he's trying to, he's no, trying no. to prove me for it being a hypocrite about like a case that we haven't even established where we agree on no, yet. Yeah. We don't have to engage. We, well, let's I go think, back to the real conversation. Look, GSU and Destiny, I don't think you're dumb people, I, I, right? Would we both agree that the impeachment process is political? Wait, it's not a matter. No, 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 of dude. Why are we? Why are we going off so hard? Wait, can we what is focus it? and finish on one topic? I mean, even go, like you gave me three qualifications for what you consider sure, incitement yeah. of a riot, and we have like pivoted so many times and so hard away. I don't think it's pivot. I'm making good points that I don't think you're doing very well answering. But please, whatever you still wanted to respond all, to, that's all, fine. I was the, the points point you've made so far. It's comparing if it's a political process, if we impeach one person, but we allow the other person to become vice president and don't give a shit when she did something worse, that's clearly a double standard that proves the impeachment's a sham. That's why I bring up the double standard. Okay, uh, you're making some good points, but that's because you're just restating what I'm saying and then attacking me over things that I've said that uh, you don't I'm know that I've said. So for instance, like you keep saying like, if you were honest, you would agree that Kamala Harris supporting people that arson buildings is a horrible thing. And I've already told you that, and I've already said word for word, and I'll say it one more time. If Kamala Harris is donating to funds or supporting people donating to funds that bails out like uh, accused arsonists or whatever, I think that would be a bad thing. So I don't, so you keep restating that, but then uh, acting like I didn't just say that. So yeah, your points are good. I know they are because they're the ones that I made. So I agree. So, okay, but, but let me say, you give her the benefit of the doubt and say, well, that we have no proof. I, I, she, I haven't given her the benefit of the doubt at all, Rob. What are you talking about? Well, did she bail out people that were convicted? Did she push a bail fund that partially- I have no idea. I haven't looked at, I know that she tweeted for some, like donate to some M, like the Minnesota Freedom Fund. I don't know who that helps. I haven't, I haven't looked into it. It's entirely possible that it does. I don't know. If it does, I don't support it. I haven't even looked into okay. that. I have no idea. What? If it did, would you support, if it, if that fund bailed out people that were convicted uh, or that were charged with burning down bu public buildings, would you say she should be impeached? Should she be impeached? Um, I don't know if that would rise to the level of impeachment. I'd have to think about it. Or, or rise to the... 
trying to defend you. You also said Trump shouldn't be impeached, I think. We right? haven't so even, but the, Rob, you're pretending like the sole qualification for incitement to riot is setting up a bail fund. I haven't said that. You were attacking, this isn't even a straw man. This is like a phantom man. I haven't even come <laughs> remotely close to defending that position there. That somebody that establishes a bail fund. Wait, Rob, 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 Rob. Let me just finish this one thing, okay? Just to be clear, okay? Right now, I'm trying to circle around for the 50 millionth time. I was just trying to figure out what you think counts as incitement to riot. By the way, yes. I don't even know if incitement to riot on its own is an impeachable thing. We haven't even talked about impeachment. That wasn't even like a, a parallel topic yet. Right now, the topic of this conversation was whether or not Trump incited a riot. And somehow you've turned that into if Kamala Harris donated to a fund for bailouts, would I agree that she should be impeached? I'm not talking about bailout funds or impeachment right now. I'm just trying to figure out what you think rises to the incitement of a riot. That's it. That's all I'm trying to figure out. You are pivoting that around to so many other topics that and claims that I haven't made and then screaming at me for claims that I already agreed with that I made originally. So I'm not screaming. It's how I talk. I okay. apologize. For that. But let's go specifically to this. Right. One, you admit, as we have in previous conversations, that impeachment is a political process. So it's important. Why are we to talking weigh... about impeachment? But listen, that's what's but, literally. But so Rob, to say, I wanna, Rob, we want to talk I about. I'll rein this in. Right. Okay. No, so, I don't want to rein this in. We're talking about right or incitement to right right now. That's all I'm right, curious right, about. Right, right, right. Punishment for incitement to riot is impeachment. And so if the people that agreed with you that anyone that incited a riot should be impeached, that's the question I have. But okay, Rob, Farron, hold on. You, want to talk you can do, about Rob, you said you have a master's degree in communication. So I know that you're capable of doing this. You must be, okay? I know that you're capable of engaging with this topic, okay? So sure. right now, all I'm trying to find out, I don't care about impeachment, okay? I don't care about kids getting eaten in a pizza shop. I don't care about Podesta. I don't care about anything else. All I'm trying to find, I don't even care about Trump right now. All I'm trying to find out is for you, if I can give you examples of things that Trump has said, if that would rise to the level of inciting a riot. That's all I'm curious about right now, because I don't know what the answer to that question is right now. So it makes it really hard to go forward in the conversation. That's all I'm trying to okay, figure out right and now. I, and what I'm saying is when we see things that were obvious, more incitement, obvious, more direct actions that were more incitement of violent or riots that occurred on the other side and you or the more importantly the people in positions of power didn't take it that way that that proves that this is a political process you know, and, not and you know what rob i'm going to give you the cheat code here here's how you would totally own me on that argument so you gave me three points i think or two points for what would consider as incitement to riot now let's say that we walk through all three of those and then i give you evidence from trump and by the end of that you agree with all three now it would appear as though i've won the argument i said oh well look he met all three legs of your test then what you would say is, well, hold on, Destiny. While Trump may have met and satisfied the three legs of this test, I can give you examples of Democrats that not only met those three different tests, they exceeded it in every single sense of the word. That's what you would do instead of trying to point for one part of this and then talk about impeachment that has absolutely nothing to do with the conversation. So why don't we see if... Please, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. So well, let's just see if, if what Trump said meets rises to your level of incitement to right. And then if it does, and then it seems like maybe I've owed you, maybe then you'll own me and you'll say, well, look, Democrats have actually done, have actually met all of these qualifications on their own and they've exceeded what Trump has done. So why don't you, Destiny, call for their impeachment? That would, right? That's what we would do, right? Okay. Would you, first off on this point, would you admit that based on this argument that you've given, that we're saying that the definition of incitement to riot is subjective on which each of our feelings are, correct? So you're asking me what my feeling is, we're talking about- I already, we've already established that. The initial question that I asked you, so I'll restate it in case you don't remember, okay? The, the initial question I asked you is, do you think that somebody can incite some people to rioting without directly calling for violence? And you said yes, so I just wanted to carry you. I do think that's the case, but I do not think what Trump said led to that level, nor do I think what Kamala Harris did led to that level, nor do I think what Bernie Sanders did. Sure, and I understand, I but that's why I'm trying to figure out if that's the case. So I so the next part, I, so in it, on it, clear on this. I mean, I said it during our panel discussion. I think I've been quite clear on that, right? So no, the because idea, that's the conversation I've tried to have for the last 20 minutes, but we can't get anywhere because you keep going to other topics. I said this in John Burke's debate. I oh, said oh, yeah. that I wasn't blaming Kamala. I wasn't blaming. Sure. We haven't had the chance to have like a, we haven't even had the conversation yet. I, we, have, we can't get to it because you keep bringing up other stuff. We have it, even though we had it in the debate. Okay, no, we, so haven't make... we still haven't had it. You're about to pivot to something different. No, let me make it clear to you. Do I think, you're asking me, is it possible to incite violence without specifically calling for it? Yes. yes. Do I think that specifically what Trump did led to that level? No. Okay, now that, that no, that's what I'm, that's what I want to 
argue over because you right. gave me a couple right. of qualifications for what you would consider inciting a group of people to rioting without calling for direct violence. And now I personally, I believe that met, that Trump met or beat your test. So now I want to go through each of the little requirements that you gave, and then we can argue over whether these satisfies the conditions of what you would consider to be incitement to riot without directly calling for violence willing to do that i am if you're willing to do the opposite when it comes to democrats yeah, of Fair? course that i just told you that would be the logical next step of our argument of course so then go ahead yeah you can ask your questions and i'll respond as honestly as i can okay so when you said someone would have to say that the stakes were so high that if you didn't do this it would be terrible and then the quote that I replied with was Trump saying, and we fight, we fight like hell. If you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. Do you think that a quote like this or similar quotes are sufficient to show people that the stakes are incredibly high and that if they don't do something, it will be terrible? I think that that is a necessary condition of inciting a riot, but not proof that one was incited. I, yeah, and sure. So this is necessary, but not sufficient. I know that's because we're only on like one of three. You gave me two others. Right? right. Okay. That's fair. And let me, let me skip ahead and you could keep going. Like, I have said publicly that although I don't think it was incitement to a riot, that I think Trump should be blamed for understanding when you encourage that many people to show up to the Capitol and you're saying the stakes are that high, that you should understand that violence could occur. And even though he said it should be peaceful, I think he should have went further. I think he should have said, we are not what they're trying to paint us as. Do not clash with police. Do not. I think he should have said that. But that's different than saying he incited violence. That's saying that he was negligent in preventing violence. That's different than saying he incited. Sure. Okay. So the second leg of this, um, so is you mentioned the wink and nod, you should go do something. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, do you think that the Rudy Giuliani trial by combat quote, whatever, would be sufficient for something like that? No, I don't. I think that this is the same as people saying we need to get out there and we need to fight. When you look at the Judy Giuliani uh, quote in context, what he's talking about, he, specifically before and after that, he's talking about litigation. He says, I'm willing to put money itself on the line in the court of law. It's going to be trial by combat. That's what he's talking about. Okay. Do you think that? Do you think that? Do you think that a quote like this? Okay. Do you think that a quote like this? Um, our country has had. Or I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, if a Democrat president presidential candidate had an election rigged and stolen with proof of such acts at a level never seen before, the Democrat senators would consider it an act of war and fight to the death. Do you think that that's in that level? No. Okay. We are going to cheer on our brave senators and congressmen and women, and we are probably not going to be cheering so much for some of them because you will never take back our country with weakness. Do you think that's kind of like saying you should do something? Protest? You should vote people? No, I don't think that's a call to violence. Okay. <clears throat> Our country has had enough, we'll not take it anymore. And that is what this is all about. We wanna go back and we wanna get this right because we're going to have somebody in there that should not be in there. And our country will be destroyed. We're not going to stand for that. Do you think that any of that kind of sounds a little no. bit like winking and on? Okay, so no. maybe we'll say that the second leg um, wasn't met. So on the third leg, you say, when the person says there's no diplomatic process that could take place, do you think that Trump undermining the system and saying that Pence had failed him on the day of the uh, vote counting or whatever, do you think that that was him undermining the system of certifying the election result? No. How not? Because it, Or rather, do you, could you tell me what diplomatic process did Trump say would take place then? Could you tell me? Um, like the Trump's idea that Pence would have like overruled the results of the election was asinine and bullshit. And any conservative that thinks that it was acceptable, all you have to do is put yourself in the opposite position. If Trump had won, or I'm sorry, if like, for example, Romney would have won in 2012 and VP Biden would have been like, no, nah, I'm not gonna accept the results of the election, no matter how much proof you thought or didn't think was there, Republicans would have been pissed. So it was a bullshit argument and it was stupid. Do I think that it rised to the result of saying that people must riot? No. It was I'm not, I'm not asking about stupid. I'm just asking, right? You, so one of the things you said is that there, there's, there's no diplomatic process that could take place. Do you not agree that Trump's rhetoric made it sound as though like electoral options were exhausted and that something else had to happen? That he had tweeted that Pence had failed him that morning and that there was no more diplomatic process that could take place? No, I don't think that. And when we get to when I get to ask you questions, I'll admit how when I hear leftists talk about the how systemically racist or biased the system is and there's nothing more that could be done and the riot is the language of the unheard. I also don't think that when leftists say that they're 
saying that there's no other process. So when I'm Trump is saying, this, when Trump is saying, think I'm wrong. Sure. So when Trump is saying you don't concede when there's theft involved, our country has had right. enough. We will not take it anymore. What does he mean when he says right. we won't concede? What is he saying they should do there? I think he's saying that you should pressure all the legislators, that you should show up, that you should protest, that you should show that we're not going to accept this theft of the election. I don't think that that's a call for violence. What is somebody supposed to do if all the courts have failed and the, and the corrupt congressmen right now are certifying the results and the one last person in the diplomatic process that could have stopped them, Pence, Trump is now saying has failed him. What is he saying there that they should do? Clearly all the processes have failed at this point. The legal ones have failed, okay. but now Congress has failed. Okay, that's fine. I hope you hold the same standard when we get to conversations to the left, but that's fine. If we say that what he's suggesting, I don't know exactly what he's suggesting, but it's irrelevant to think that, that because he's saying that everything's failed, that that automatically is implicitly a call to violence. I think what that well, is what is happens saying, after all the processes here, get, well, 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 Put pressure, put pressure on people. What kind of use pressure? Use your dollar, use your voice, go out and protest, do these things, make sure that this theft's not allowed to occur. Ensure that every Republican that you know that you voted for audits this election, things like that. That's what I think he's saying. Those Rob, are the things he those was saying issues, publicly. Rob, those issues, issues have already been exhausted, though. They've already done all that. Oh, no, yes. no, they didn't audit the election. They, they were, they had several independent state audits. They had several no, legal cases didn't. going through. What do you mean? No, they do. They didn't do different recounts. They, they didn't audit. They recounted. They didn't. No, they didn't audit. They recounted. Okay. In terms audit. of auditing, the FBI themselves had access to Dominion machines, and Barr himself cannot, came out and said that there was no evidence of any type of tampering or anything like that. So, in terms of whatever audit you're looking for, like whatever was going to be done, it seems as though that was exhaustively looked into and done. It's okay. First, let me say a couple things about this one. Fuck Bill Barr. I mean, it's evident even from the Epoch Times articles that have came out since that Bill Barr was more interested in pushing the executive orders of Joe Biden before he was in office than doing what Trump wanted. You could agree or disagree, but Bill Barr is a shill. Uh, secondly, I've came out and I said, I challenge you to find any comment that I've ever said about Dominion changing votes on any stream that I've ever done. I didn't say I'm it. not saying I'm not I saying it's anything an allegation specific. made, but I don't have any that... proof of it. And I totally understand sure. left wingers that say there's no proof of it. And a lot of it, by the way, like the fact that Dominion servers got raided in Germany sounded like outright conspiratorial bullshit to me. OK, sure. I said I'm just saying that in terms of I'm sure that in terms of like auditing the elections, in terms of like states doing recounts, states turning over machines to the FBI or other three letter agencies, the DHS, you know, the cyber crimes guy made a statement like all of these people seem like they looked in on things and everybody seemed like everything was on the up and up like what other audit do you think people would have thought could have been done well, no, that, that's not an audit like for example Wait, what audit could have been done yeah if, if you allow me if you allow me to finish like for example in pennsylvania specifically we saw that almost through executive fiat that the governor tom wolf who's a democrat ordered that actually signatures voting signatures did not have to match the voter registration files and what so happens when that was challenged in court Right. They said that there wasn't standing. So that's what they said. They, 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 they went through the, the process. Judge basically alluded to the fact that it was well, what he said was, by the way, uh, this is this is again me bitching. Uh, what he said was the judge in Pennsylvania basically said this. There probably would have been a case to be had had Republicans raised this case before the election. But instead, they waited till afterwards. I totally agree with that. I absolutely agree. The Republicans in Pennsylvania dropped the ball. They allowed this to go through, didn't challenge it until after the election didn't go their way. I agree. That's horseshit. But that doesn't mean that there wasn't a legitimate grievance there. It doesn't. Do you understand how in the eyes of a judge, your legitimate grievance might be damaged if you only selectively bring those grievances up after you've lost an election? Yes, I absolutely agree. Do you think it's that. fair absolutely. that a judge that, might? Do you, think that it, yeah, you. do you think that it's fair for a judge to look at it that way when this is consistently the he case? He could, across? but that doesn't prove that doesn't prove that the grievance was unwarranted. It just proves you only bitched about it when it cost you. That doesn't mean the grievance was unwarranted. When all of the other judges have looked at the grievances across the country and they've investigated tapes and they've talked to different people and they've gone through affidavits and it looks like nothing held up, like, I mean, this, I don't know what you're expecting, like, any judge to say. Like, it's not like anybody's, like, refused to review any of the evidence submitted and any they of the did. three they cases. They did. They did refuse to review based on standing. But again, I'm, I'm not taking the position you think I'm taking. I'm saying, let's say for the sake of argument that all of these cases were bullshit. That doesn't prove that Donald Trump thought they were bullshit. And he was saying the only mechanism Wait, is violence. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that, proving, that I'm not trying to prove. No, cases. right now, the argument I'm not making is that Donald Trump thought they were bullshit. Right now, the argument I'm making is that all other options besides violence 
had been exhausted and everybody knew that, but Trump was still calling no, no, that, on people to act. No, that's not the argument you're making. You're making the argument that Donald Trump knew that. And so therefore, when he talked about this, he knew that violence was the only other option. Also, I'm real quick, that, I have no. a, just real quick, I got a law student in chat saying that the, for the cases in Pennsylvania, those cases were decided on the merits and they didn't survive motions to dismiss because of insufficiency of evidence, not just that there was I don't, no I don't, I don't agree with that. Uh, I, I'd be willing, uh, look, one, I'm not a law student. I don't agree with that based on the research that I've seen, but I'm not saying that that couldn't entirely be true. I'm just saying that what I've seen was that the judge said that it, basically the judge basically said, yeah, the state legislator should have been involved in this instead of executive fiat, but that's on the state legislator for not challenging this when it occurred. Either way, it's the GOP's fault. I'm just saying the important that what you have to prove that prove to prove that Trump was inciting violence, you're saying, well, there was no other recourse than violence. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, no, if Trump thought that there were legal remedies to this, then there were remedies that weren't violence. It doesn't matter then if those Trump, remedies but then actually exist. Trump should be pursuing those legal remedies, which he had been trying to, not encouraging his audience to go and march on the Capitol, knowing that their country was falling like into disarray and saying that the election but had been stolen. But you know that's not exactly how things work. You know that that's the way exactly things work is if pressure is put on by an electorate that they're more likely to do something. So Trump's Wait. pushing his electorate to push the, the it, that, courts. That and happens. Other that happens before the election. Once an election is over, you can't really push your electorate to do anything. That's why they're called the electorate. They help you in elections. Oh, but you can push They're not them the protesterate or the rioterate. Listen, again, you're talking about, well, the legally the avenues were exhausted. We don't have any proof that Donald Trump thought that. It is entirely I don't, I don't, possible. I don't know what Donald Trump thought. I'm not, I don't care what he thought. Right. What, I'm, what I'm trying, because I'm not, because remember, I'm not speaking to Donald Trump's intentions. I've said that. I'm trying to think of what did the average protester think? My guess is the average protester pretty... think when, when Donald Trump is saying that your country is being stolen from you, that we need to fight, we can't take it anymore, we're not going to concede when there's theft involved, and when Trump is saying that to his audience, and the audience is seeing all of these cases fail all over the country, both from Trump's legal team and other legal teams, and then they see that Trump tweeted that morning that his own vice president was backstabbing him, what do they think was left besides rioting? That's, that's the point. So, so you're saying that incitement doesn't require intent. You have said that. You said that. Uh, no, yeah. no, 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 you no, agree no, no. With us. You just said, well, listen, GSU, listen. He just said it doesn't matter what Donald Trump actually thought. It That's was exactly what, did the what we all said. Okay, then, well, I, I mean, I'll take that. Of course, I don't believe incitement to riot requires intent. Of course not. Okay, so fair enough. So your argument but is. Wait, that do you believe that? that? Trump... You agree with that earlier, Rob? Yes. What are you. No, no, I think incitement requires intent. I okay. absolutely do. Just, literally... to clear, oh, just to be clear, God. just to be clear, just to be clear, just to be clear, Rob, Rob, Rob. Just to be clear, when you oh, gave me your requirements for what it was required to incite a riot without saying it directly, you never mentioned that they needed to intend to incite a riot. You could have just listed that initially, and I would have forgot. We would have ignored this whole conversation because I can never improve that. We know that we could never prove the intention. Oh, I of a listed person. what would be necessary. What would be necessary conditions, but not the final condition? Well, the condition you hit the for final condition. Is and it's clear <laughs> the that I mean condition? that. Oh, just that wait, just wait, just wait. It's clear that I meant that because I said over and over that despite the fact that I saw Democrats calling for bailing out of riders, despite the fact that I saw people shooting congressional candidates and congressional members parroting rhetoric, I said over and over, I did not blame them for incitement. So it's clear that I thought that the intent mattered. It's clear. Okay. I wish and, you would have just so said that initially. That Wait, I, yeah, it. I wish you would have said that initially because I wouldn't have wasted my time on all these other legs because I can't prove the intent of any person. But I also, I don't think the intentionality of a public leader matters. This is totally irrelevant. That's fair. That's fair. So we have a dis we have a disagreement. I don't. No, no, no. I don't think we disagree. I don't think you truly hold no, no, this no, point. No, 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 no. So you think that incitement can occur without intent? So if you, you set wait, the conditions yeah. where you tell people shit's hopeless, mm -hmm. there's nothing you could do through voting, and so therefore this shit's really bad. You think that's incitement, correct? Uh, yeah. Okay. So if I were able to provide you the democratic politicians then that talked about how systemic Wait, 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 wait. I just want to was... establish this point before, and then we can go on and talk about democratic politicians, okay? I just sure. want to establish this point, okay? You believe, you genuinely believe that you could never call for an assignment of a riot if you didn't intentionally want to do so? You don't think that could happen by other, like, rhetoric? Yes, I think that incitement implies that you intentionally led people to commit violence. So if That's you were to get on stage I, and you were just sharing what you thought were facts and you were saying things like, I think our country is being stolen from us. I don't think Congress is going to listen. I think the process has failed us. I think courts have fucking failed us. The election, the, the goddamn mail-in ballots were fucking rigged. And unless we actually start doing something about it, unless we, unless we really show them that we mean business, 
I, I just, I don't think that, I don't think anything is going to change in this country. We're going to lose our country. It's going to be stolen from us, from the Democrats. You don't think that a speech like that, even if the person doesn't intend to start a riot, you don't think something like that could like incite a riot? It's not incitement. People could take that message and do what they want with it and commit violence, but that's not incitement. No. Oh, okay. I, I, I don't. Do you think so now? Now? Yeah, I, go ahead. I answered your questions, I think, legitimately, right? Mm -hmm. sure. Okay. So if we had someone that was saying that this country is systemically racist and nothing's changed and it's always been built on racism and that there was a 1619 project and this country was founded on racism and nothing will change unless you take to the streets, do you think that's incitement to violence? Um, yeah, if they're not responsible with their messaging, of course, yeah. So a really good okay. example of this so would you, be, um, do I don't remember that one lady that was on the news that was screaming like, uh, like take that shit to the suburbs, like blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, I would say mm -hmm. stuff like that is, of course. So then let's get to Maxine Waters specifically. When she said that uh, surround them, don't leave them be comfortable in restaurants. You surround them. You chase them. Do you think that's incitement to violence? Um, yeah, that sounds really irresponsible to me. Assuming, of course, this is the full context of what she said, which I, I'm well, hesitant to believe. But if, if it was, I, I, I haven't seen this But yeah, if somebody says something like that, I would say, yeah, that's incredibly irresponsible. Of so course. do you think if the punishment, do you think that people that are calling for Trump's impeachment, but that are okay with Maxine Waters are being hypocritical? Um, I don't know if incitement to riot on its own is something that I think somebody should be impeached over. We haven't even gotten to the, the impeachment question yet. Well, right. I agree with that. But do you think the criticism directed at Trump from people that defended or ignored what Maxine Waters said was hypocritical? Um, do I, yeah, po possibly. Yeah. I, but I don't okay. know how I'm supposed to answer so for other people's like me. hypocrisy. Our disagreement just... Our disagreement's this. You think both of those instances are incitement, which is good. You're being consistent. I think neither of them are. That's it. That's our disagreement. Neither of us is being or intellectually inconsistent then. So we could go through. Do you think that bailing out people that were arrested for riot is a possible incitement to invite? Like if you're someone who's watching the police precinct burn down in Minneapolis and you see that the vice presidential candidate for the Democratic Party and many of the staffers for the presidential candidate and Joe Biden are bailing out people at a riot fund that was engaged for that, do you think that that could possibly be incitement that people could say, oh, this is what they want me to do? I think it's a little bit of an, a stretch to say that it can incite further rise, but it could, sure. Do you think when it's coupled with Kamala Harris saying that the unrest will continue and it should even after the election, that that makes it more likely that that would incite violence? Um, unrest? I would have to see the speech she's making that in. It's on Stephen Colbert. She did it on a Stephen Colbert. Sure. I don't think right. there's anything Do wrong with think... unrest. To be clear, I unequivocally support people's right to protest. And oh, but it doesn't and... matter what the but it doesn't matter what the specific word she said. I mean, Donald Trump said, "Be peaceful." Yeah, but I'm, but I'm not criticizing Donald Trump based on one speech. I'm looking at the totality of what he said exactly. and the conditions that he's presented. I don't know why you keep trying to compare okay, one to one. Okay, but the conditions like, that Kamala Maxine, Harris was presented Maxine, is... It's Maxine Waters or if Kamala Harris were out there saying over and over again, the system is rigged, the system is failing you, these politicians won't listen to your vote, you need to go out and do something, then that would be closer to a level of what Trump has done. It's not like quite there, Rob, but it'd be closer. You, you, you don't think that that happens Rob, over and think, over in the you Democratic Party? don't think it's Party? a problem that you're comparing one thing from everybody to like years and years of Donald, uh, a year of Donald Trump? You don't think there's a difference there? Oh, of course. It's even worse for the Democratic Party. They've been saying for years and years that the country is systemically racist and that the voices of black people aren't heard and that law enforcement is systemically racist. I'm afraid and no to how ask you. Vote, you. The shit continues over and over. Is that not the message that we see? I'm afraid to ask you if you think there's systemic racism in America because your answer might be no. Okay, well, well, I'll <laughs> give you two answers. One, why is that relevant to the conversation? Well, it's because relevant Destiny's because we, we could... Destiny's talking about incitement of violence, right? The The condition of incitement to violence wasn't that it had to be true or false. Wait, 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 the hold on. It was if you yeah. make people feel that it's hopeless, that then it's expected that they will use violence. Do you think that every right? single riot is equally good or equally bad? Or do you think some riots can be justified and some riots are unjustified? No, I think that we need to condemn the action. I think that we okay, can't Okay, do you have think that the sure? Do you think wait, if wait, I wait, explain, no, 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 wait, wait, no, no. I just because I can because I don't think you truly believe this. Do you think that the American Revolution was unjust? It's different. Wait, right? why? And I'll tell you why. Are you, you going to let me explain, or are you just going to, right? Well, you've talked a ton. Don't act like I'm cutting you off all the time. I'm just asking. Well, no, I was worried that you were about to say, I was worried about, I was, I was sure. for three I, seconds and you cut me off. Well, no, no, because usually right? what will happen is I'll say, like, is the American Revolution justified? And you're like, well, the American Revolution was justified, but when Maxine Waters said that thing about George White, like, that's usually what we do. So I'm asking you very clearly, yeah, why do you think it wasn't? Go ahead. 
Okay, right. So let me explain. For every one time that political violence is justified, there's probably 100,000 times that it's been excused that it wasn't justified or that people have used it. Do I think that declaring war on a state like the Boston Tea Party or the political revolution was justified? Yes, I do. Do I think that that means that just because that was justified that one time that it somehow justifies calling for political violence in today's climate, whether you be on the left or the right? No. And if you think that it does justify political violence and you say, well, the okay, violence wait, wait, wait. is okay. I've got to stop. I've got to stop. I've got to stop. I've got to stop. No, 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 because now you you do this a lot, okay? So I ask you a question, then you answer it, and then you go on to attack what you think my next point is, and I've never made that point, okay? I didn't say anything about how one point of violence can justify all future violence. I was just making the point that you do think there are times when rioting can be justified, and you just said as much. Now it might be that there are a thousand cases of unjustified rioting for every one case of justified rioting, but there are absolutely cases where rioting could be justified. I can give you an example that you might agree with. If Biden were to create the estrogen-infused trans warriors to go to every neighborhood and steal all of their guns, you might consider that a case where, well, hold on, maybe this is, and then they were to force estrogen injections on all men to turn them into trans women or something. You might say in this case, well, hold on, I think that rioting against the government, this actually might be justified, right? We agree that there are cases where rioting could be justified. So don't try to say that every single case of a riot is equal. And if you support one, you have to sort them all. Or if you don't support one, you can't support any of them. Okay, what's your point then? Well, my point is that you're trying to say, well, hold on. If somebody said this thing and it incites a riot, isn't that bad? Well, hold on. It actually does matter if you support the underlying cause. That's important. That doesn't make right. you a hypocrite. No, if somebody that's, said, that's the point. It doesn't. It does. And this is what, what happens is it's used over and over by people that want to use double standards and be hypocritical. It's not a double Every standard, single person Rob. that engages in a riot thinks that their cause is worthwhile. Yeah, not all of them that's are right. That's why we should... Get What's that? That's and not all of them are right, but that's why we're having a discussion that's right now right. to figure out that's which ones are okay and which ones aren't. That's why we need to say with political discourse that we condemn this political violence totally. You don't get to say like you do. Well, we have to. I think this side's political violence was reasonable, but I think the other side's political violence was horrible. You don't get to say that because you've actively incurred. Wait, and so we don't get to make? We can't you know, use our quick, wait, wait, wait. We can't. We can't quick, decide which forms of violence are okay and which forms are. What do you think the predictable result is? What do you think the predictable result is when we have people in positions of power? That over and over say these riots weren't a big deal, they're excused, or they were worthwhile. But then the other side, what do you think the other side's gonna do? You don't think that they're gonna predictably use the same pattern? Well, we're not right now, we're not talking about like a pragmatic justification for rioting. We're trying to figure out if we think some are right and some are wrong. I think personally, I think all forms of political violence are pretty bad in the United States because it's just gonna lead to a huge shit show. That's right, but that's not what you said when I talked to you. You said that political violence directed against the state was acceptable, that it was the other side of the coin to voting. Okay, let that's me, what hold you on, said. let me be, I understand, okay? And not everybody gets very confused on here, so I'm gonna say this. I know sometimes people just say random words, not smart. I'm trying to be very particular, very precise with my language, okay? Just because yeah. something is ethically justified doesn't mean that I would pragmatically support it. Okay, so I believe that it is possible that rioting against the state, especially a state that is involved in actively oppressing you, can absolutely be ethically justified. But that doesn't mean I would support it pragmatically. Somebody goes to, if somebody takes out a knife in a bar and is like threatening you, like ethically, could you shoot that person? Yeah, I think so. But you know, like pragmatically, you probably shouldn't just be pulling out your gun and shooting everybody you see that pulls a knife on you immediately. That's probably not a good idea, right? Just because I might support the ethics of something doesn't mean I support the pragmatism of something. Now, if you've listened to anything that I've said in the past, not the one-off comments that you've heard me say on stream that you think you can snipe and repeat at me over and over again, I have explicitly said over and over and over again, I have expressed so much frustration with riots on the left that I've literally quoted as saying shit like, riots are literally the only way Donald Trump wins. That right now, the only thing Donald Trump has going for him are these dipshit CNN reporters saying the scene here is peaceful with a fucking gas station on fire behind them. I have never okay, come out so and pragmatically can, supported riots. Go ahead. If I can, right? You said when I talked to you about this in June that you actually had the opposite position. You asked, you seem to imply and ask me specifically, do you think the riots will help or hurt Trump? I said, I think I'll help. They'll help them. You were like, okay, we'll see. Look, why would you beat around the bush? Okay, if wait, this wait, is can really I be, can opinion? we be really real clear? Quick, real quick, I'll ask you a question. Why would you beat around the bush if this was really your opinion when we were discussing these riots and you were like, I said specifically, here was the actual context. First, you started talking about, you, and I commend you for this, you said, I'm against riots that occur to business owners and things like that. But if it's against police precincts and things like that, I think they could be more justified. Why wouldn't you say, well, these burning down the police precinct was wrong? 
Instead, you talked about how it could be justified. So you because had saying something is because Rob, do you acknowledge that there's a difference between saying something was wrong versus saying you disagree with doing something, or do you think those two things are the same? No, they could be the same. But if someone asks you, "What do you think about this?" Wait, and you hold on, a, wait, wait. Can we? Wait, I just want to focus well, on this. Could theoretically just, be just no, 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 no. Can we just focus on this for a minute? Do you think that just because you agree or disagree with something, that means that you're saying that it is right or wrong? No. Okay, then why are you trying to equate the two things that I'm saying here? I can understand why a people might want to protest and even riot against certain public institutions. That doesn't mean that I think they should do that. It doesn't mean that I agree with them doing that. It doesn't mean I think I mean, that that's the uh, best let me thing. Ask you, let me ask you this. If you ask me, like, Rob, do you think the January 6th riots were wrong? And I said to you, well, sometimes it's acceptable to riot against the state. Would you walk away from that conversation thinking that I basically just excused the riots? Well, yeah, I'd want to know what your particular stance was there. That's so you right. could, that's you could exactly say, the but, conversation no, no, I had Rob, with you. But you could say, Rob, you could say to me, you know, I think that these people, I think that they were justified in their rioting. I don't agree with them doing it. I don't think they should. But if these people truly thought that their election was stolen from them, and I think ample evidence has been shown of that, then yeah, I do support their right even to riot on the Capitol. And you know what? That's a position that you could even argue about if you really truly believe that. I don't believe that. That's, That's why fine. I'm, I'm saying not saying you don't. I'm just saying that you could do that. I wouldn't call you a hypocrite for saying that you can justify something, but you wouldn't agree with it. If a person went to a school and they found out that their kid, if, if they watched their kid get kicked by a fully grown adult and that parent just fucking killed that person, I 100% would understand that. But I don't think it's right. So, I, I mean, so like. The point is, right, the point is that it, I'm not even arguing whether or not you think it was right or not is the problem. The problem is whether or not you think it was justified. That's the problem, which you clearly do think it was justified, apparently, in the instance of the Black Lives Matter burning down in Minneapolis precinct, etc. Sure, I think if you're, yeah, if, you if you want to talk about, yeah, if, if you want to talk about like the justification for riots, like we could go over that if you want. Sure, I don't know how far if you would even necessarily disagree with my perspective there. My, my, okay, just real quick, I my justification. Restroom. Okay, yeah, go for before it. Before I piss my pants, uh, if you want to stay, you can. If not, we could talk some other day. I'll be like. I can only stay on for another 15 minutes. That's anyway. fine. So I got to go to sleep soon anyway. Okay. Okay. I appreciate this conversation, but I think that you're, t I think you, you're being hypocritical about it and not fair. That's what I think. You could disagree. Obviously you will. But I think that the fact that you justified riots, you said it's the other side. And that's exactly what we see from people in positions of political power. You don't. I thought you had to go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom, Rob. Says, go. Feel, I'm going. Thank you. GSU, if you stick around, I'll talk to you for like 10 minutes. All right, yeah. We got some stuff we definitely disagree with. Jesus, fuck. I feel like I'm trying... I feel like he, like... It feels to me like he has constructed all of these, like... Uh, have you ever played Metal Gear Solid? Yeah. He's got... He's like Raiden. He has like 150 missions of VR that he's assassinated. These horrible arguments over and over again. And anytime I say something that even resembles one of them, he just like tries to shoehorn me into yes. that. And then he... Yeah, and it's like, Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I ran into that when I first started being on Twitch. It's like, no, I don't have the same point that you think a thousand other people that you debated with have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for and sure. And it feels like they're just uh, listening for you to say, like you're like running through tires or whatever and like basic training or some shit. And they're like trying to wait for you to step in one thing. And they're like, ah, and then they just, they launch down that whole avenue of attack. It's like, dude, I didn't say any of this, you know? And it, like, it drives yeah. me crazy. Yeah, no. Um, you know I disagree with your take on. On which on one? some of these majors out here now. <laughs> on some of these what? Some of these majors in college. Oh, like, yeah, sure. We... You agree that we have a, a student loan crisis, right? I don't think so, personally. You... you. I think student Wait. loans are fine. I think that the majority of people that have... The majority of student loan debt is held by graduate degree holders that are mostly, like, upper middle class that are making, like, well above median salaries. I think it's fine. I think people can pay it back. We have a lot of people that are getting student loan debt because, like, degrees are costing more and more, but they're also earning more and more. Um, the, do you think mm -hmm. most... Do you think... Well, okay. Mm -hmm. How do I structure this? Do you think all degrees give back a salary that can pay for the amount of loans that were taken out all degrees absolutely and i'm sure there are a lot of i don't want to call them junk degrees because i think knowledge is important no, no, but there yeah i'm sure there are degrees should, that what you should, we, we should call them junk degrees right we should call it like 
you can say that there's value in this knowledge that you're going to gain. It's just not marketable, right? Well, yeah, but I don't think uh, I don't think Rob said something earlier that I think is actually really true. I don't think that a, a degree should come down to just how much money you make, but you have to be aware of your position in life before you pursue a degree. Like if exactly. like for instance, yeah, exactly. So that's the problem. That's the problem that I see. Right? Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of people who are in economically disadvantaged situations, mm -hmm. and then they're told, "Hey, you know what? You can, you can go get this uh, African studies degree, but that African studies degree is not for you. It's for somebody that." maybe has a lifestyle where they're not like going hundreds of thousands of dollars in the student loan to pay for it. Yeah, that, that could potentially be a problem. I don't think that's like that represents even a big minority of degree holders. But yeah, that could be true. If people are if people are in like economically disadvantaged scenarios and then they're pursuing degrees that aren't going to pay for themselves, that's probably really bad. I would agree with that, of course. Okay. If I could, if I could jump, like jump in, I know it's going back to the previous conversation. Just one more thing, mm -hmm. and then I'll bail out and leave you guys talk. Like Destiny, let me ask you this seriously: Do you think that there is a danger of saying that, for whatever reason that you have, that the riots on the left, even if you don't agree with them, were justified? Do you think that single statement makes it more likely that riots occur from people other than those groups? Um. If you encourage political violence on one side, is it likely that the other side will respond in kind with violence? Is yes. that basically Yeah, of course. Yes. Okay. That's why I have a problem with your statement. Okay, I've but been wait, to fight this is what this, this is but this violence. is but I like Oh, you're gonna say about like public institutions. Because you do at the very least you understand that I am wholesale against like instituting against private business, right? Yes. Okay. I, 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 and I was careful to acknowledge that. Okay. But I'm also that's not generally what we saw January sure. 6th. I am against I am against for pragmatic reasons and and for for probably for like outcome oriented reasons in the United States that we start like making it normal or we normalize like violent protests, right? However, I think maybe we could both agree that especially historically, there have been times in the United States where it's probably been righteous for certain groups of people to stand up even in violent conflict with the government when their voices weren't being heard for whatever reason, whether it's people that legitimately didn't have the right to vote or people that were being fucked over by the government or attacked by the government in some form. We, can we agree that those situations have existed in U.S. history? They have, but we have to be very careful because they've been such a minority of the time and nothing that we're seeing right now, whether it be people that think that their voices aren't heard and the election was stolen from them or the right or people on the left that feel that the system's systemically racist, etc. Nothing that we're talking about rises to that level. Sure. And we have to be clear about that. I agree, but what you said earlier, okay, you said that the whole riots are the language of the unheard or whatever, right? If people feel the need to riot, and it's getting to that point, like, at some level, like, we probably need to address the underlying conditions causing this to happen, right? Because if people truly feel like this is their only recourse, then, I mean, it's probably... But it's probably worth addressing. Okay, but right? if that's true, then you would be against what we're seeing suggested from people that were at the Capitol. Because what's being like, let me ask you this. Yes, there is the, a, for example, with George Floyd, we have the idea, and even with Michael Brown, we had the idea of the specific scenario, like the actual image of this specific case leading to people being super pissed. But even you acknowledged in the last discussion I had with you that it's more than that. That's just an impetus, but in reality, it's about something more. It's about this perceived unfairness, this perceived lack of voice from people of color, right? You, you mm -hmm. would still agree with that, correct? Yeah, and I'm gonna be very frank. BLM chooses some horrible fucking representatives sometimes. So. Right, I, I agree, but yeah. and you're fair on that. But I think you could say the same thing about what we saw at the Capitol. Yes, there was people that thought the election was stolen. Yes, there were a large people that that thought that the election should be audited and that it wasn't being and that they were pissed off about that. Okay, but, but the difference... Go ahead, I'll yeah, leave so, you. Yes, I'll leave you. Sure, so the big difference here is that, like, when George Floyd was killed, okay, I think that this struck a chord and it probably rang true legitimately for the lived experiences of a lot of people in this country. If people felt like they wanted to protest against that, I would support that. If people felt like they wanted to ride against it, man, pragmatically, I don't support it, but I understand it, and it might be justifiable, depending upon what your experience with the state has been, depending on how the state has oppressed you or how the state of things you, possibly. The difference is that the capital rioters were all there because they had been misled by another leader. Those people weren't being just, disenfranchised. Those people weren't, their votes weren't stolen. They weren't thrown away. They weren't lied to about the voting system. That's the difference. If if that it actually happened, so you know what? Here, here you go. Oh, okay, are you ready? I might have to eat my fucking ass, okay, on this one in the future, okay? Because this might actually be the, the biggest self-own I've ever said. If it came out in the future 
that there is a coordinated, top-down Democratic plan to disenfranchise Republican voters against the country, I would say that the rioting at the Capitol was justified 100%. If that, if it actually came out that that was the case, well, then, I mean, like, then literally your government is being fucking stolen from you and you failed to, to get a remedy for that at every case. This is your last resort. If that, that's what Trump had people believe and it came out to be the case, then sure, I would. But that, the fact that that isn't the case, though, makes all the difference. Do you understand that? But that the question just real quick that's the question i asked whether or not you think the fact that it was di disingenuous or was a lie was why you think that it's harsher or that it was a right do you understand the question i'm asking now because Wait, the which question part I'm is disingenuous is, well that that's what i was asking that do you No, i'm asking you what was part was disingenuous like from trump from the protesters from the from from what part well, I'm saying hypothetically what you're saying that it was in disingenuous that trump was saying that the election was stolen when it wasn't is oh, that yeah, what I makes think... an incitement or if it was act that literally you just gave the response I was looking for. If you think it actually was stolen, is it still incitement? Yeah, but there's so when it comes to being a public figure, there are two things that I'm going to treat equally here and it might bother you. OK, um, I don't think when you're a public figure, you're either right or you're wrong. I think that you can be wrong because you are being like a liar but i also think that you're wrong because you're being grossly negligent and i treat those two things very similarly somebody that's wrong on accident by and, and does like a decent amount of research versus somebody that's wrong due to gross negligence i treat very similarly to somebody that is intentionally lying those are two things that i treat identically okay okay mm -hmm. i i I guess i get that point but l let me let me expound on what i was trying to say so here's the point I don't think that the people rioted just because they felt the election was an audit or the election was stolen. I think these are people that felt disenfranchised by the system for decades. I think that's why they glommed on to Donald Trump, which let's be honest, Donald Trump isn't a likable character from who he was. And I don't think that most of Donald Trump's support, most vehement supporters necessarily were supporting him based on his specific policy positions. So if it wasn't really his specific character, his policy positions, what was it? Well, they felt that this system bucked them over 50 years ago. And they feel that they're constantly told, like working class people in rural America, fly over country and things like that. They're constantly told you have privilege, you're a 10 tooth rube, you're clinging to your guns and Bibles, etc. And so they thought, right or wrong, that Trump was going to win the election and it was stolen from them in the literal matter of whether or not the election was literally stolen versus the bigger story of these are people that don't give a shit about us and our livelihood and who we are is going to be taken away from us. That was the impetus for being pissed off. Just like the I people don't, that rioted I don't, over, I don't real disagree quick, with you. Real yeah. quick, and I'll leave you respond. Just like the people that rioted over hands up, don't shoot. Hands up, don't shoot was a lie. But they thought the greater story of, oh, well, even if this specific story was a lie, the disenfranchisement that we feel that the system's given us means that we have no choice but to riot. Sure. I don't necessarily disagree with you. I don't think that every single rioter at the Capitol was this evil, horrible human being. I think that there are a lot of people across all political aisles, across multiple countries in the Western world that feel disenfranchised by governments. I don't disagree with you there at all. However, I believe that that is providing an even stronger foundation to yes. build the argument that Donald Trump channeled that energy and then used that to incite a riot. That if you yeah. know that those people feel disenfranchised and you play into that in a fantastical way, so, for instance, implying that you're so disenfranchised, your vote doesn't count. You're so disenfranchised that they're rigging it against you and we have to fight and take back this country. Then I think that it's, you, it's your responsibility as a public figure to understand the disenfranchisement and to not be irresponsible in wielding it in such a way that is going to obviously turn out in a violent riot. OK, and I don't. And again, now we might disagree. I actually think that the election was stolen, not after the election. I have no proof that there was fraud that stole the election. So it could have happened. There were a lot of anomalies. I would like to see an audit, but I don't have proof. And I understand someone like you that's not a Trump supporter would be like, dude, if you're going to run your gums, show me proof. I can't show you proof, so I don't talk about it on my show. But I feel that what we saw leading up to the election, the fact that we saw so many purveyors that control the narrative that were so one-sided, including doing things like censoring stories that were critical of Joe Biden, pushing stories that were critical of Trump, et cetera, I think that that was more than enough to swing the amount of votes necessary in these swing states. There were so many right? stories critical of both candidates. What do you mean? No, I mean, it's not even close, Destiny. Be honest. Wait, it's like, what's an example? Like, like they a censored suppressing... the old 
newspaper in the country when they read a story talking about Hunter Biden and Joe Biden's connection to the CCP. And then they had to admit like three weeks after the election, actually, the FBI is investigating this. That was literally the censored F- the by FBI, the media. The FBI, first of all, the FBI was investigating because somebody turned in some fucking drive and was making a claim of course the fbi is going to quote unquote investigate it that doesn't mean they have like an active investigation with credible leads that hunter biden had done anything wrong so the idea here but that there was a, there was suppression wait ridiculous. wait hold on hold on hold on you can't sure, say I'm sorry, I'm you, sorry. you can't say come on okay so you're I'm talking sorry, about no. the suppression of a story about like when hunter biden like fucking foot job tapes are being released and you're comparing that to like the new york times doing a massive expose on trump's tax returns and you're trying to say that like the level of journalistic integrity that went into these two things is anywhere near a equivalent that is absolutely no, absurd. It's, i mean look we could go through we could talk for hours and hours it's just and if you're honest you know this the vast majority of the people that control the narrative and the institutions of this country supported joe biden the vast majority of the narrative is super sympathetic to joe biden and super critical of donald trump it's just true we can see specific examples when it comes to this new york post story but there's so many more that we can see that any allegation rick kavanaugh is a gang rapist we'll report that uncritically it doesn't matter all of these stories that occurred over and over and over again that they jumped on anything that would make trump a, for christ's sakes they wouldn't even talk about the cuomo story that you believe was bullshit that you made fun of me saying what was he burying bodies wait, in the ocean stop. this no, was please, a fucking wait. story on, that wait, wait, i wait, knew wait, wait, wait. Rob, 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 rob can we please not don't <laughs> misrepresent what i'm saying okay i didn't literally say he was hiding the bodies okay i was counteracting your claim that he was intentionally changing numbers or intentionally you sending old people Destiny, I'll play the clip if you want. That's not what you were. You were specifically talking about the claim that I said that Cuomo was hiding how many deaths occurred in nursing. Yeah, and I, when said, I heard that, and, and I'm telling them you, in yeah, and and I, and I, yes, and I'm telling you, okay, that I misunderstood what you were saying. Because when you said hiding the numbers of deaths, I thought you literally meant he was saying not because he wasn't hiding the number of deaths. That's actually not true. He was hiding the classification or reclassifying them, right? Yeah. I, I admit to you that like you might have meant you might have meant something different. And I interpreted it differently, okay? But I wasn't seriously implying that he was hiding bodies in the ocean or that it would be impossible for them to reclassify deaths. Of course not, especially when classifying coronavirus deaths has been like a hotly debated topic for the past fucking year, right? Okay, well, let's give you the benefit of the doubt because I think well, wait, having a good I don't think we should give the benefit of the doubt. We went over this on that same panel. We no, all we thought didn't. that's what, we, we all thought that's what you meant and then you explained that, no, 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 they were just reclassifying. That literally happened live on the panel. Oh, there's a difference. The criticism you all had of me was the fact that I said that basically there was a 50 no, 50 no, chance when that this you was. You said hiding bodies at the beginning. We thought you meant actual hiding body. So we all laughed about it and joked. That okay, actually, I didn't even remember I, that. I, that I, might have been I, the case, but I don't even remember. I that. don't know. I don't think that's the case, but let's give the benefit of the doubt just for the sake of argument and agree to disagree. Nonetheless, is it aggravate you that this was a story that was known? from people that were investigating it before the election, but it was intentionally withheld until after the election. And meanwhile, people like Anthony Fauci, people like the Emmy committee that were giving Emmys to Cuomo, they withheld this information. Do you think there's a possibility that it was for a political bent? It's, and are it, you it is a, So I, I, we, we would have to visit a lot of different parts of this, but that could be the case, but none of that has any bearing on any of my feelings about Trump or anything that we've talked about related to Trump today. No way, I'm not saying it has any bearing, but what I'm saying is this goes to the story that I'm talking about, that there are a lot of people that feel that this system screwed them over and that Trump was their last hope, regardless if that's just true. Because the media, just because the media might be biased and it's in, in reporting again about two different clients, that doesn't give you... Or, um, Two, two different um, candidates doesn't give you the authority to go and say that the election was rigged. It was. The, well, let what? me ask you. Let me ask you. Okay. Let me not say it was. Let me ask you this. Do you think that there's a possibility that if we have all these major institutions shaping a narrative, that they could sway a certain number of votes? No. You don't think that? Not at all. Of course not. Absolutely. You not. don't think that? The level I mean, of the amount of court, the amount of court, Rob, the amount of coordination that would require from so many different parties and so many different individual people to actually sway the necessary number of votes in order to actually flip that election across several states. And the fact that not a single person was caught doing it betrays a hilarious faith that you have in the government that they would be anywhere near competent enough to pull and off that conspiracy. It has nothing to do with whether or not they were caught. I'm asking you the hypothetical question. Yeah, and I'm we'll telling you well, whether or not it happened. Well, I mean, you don't think if the narrative. Wait, hold on. Hypothetically, is it possible? Well, yeah. I I mean, technically anything's possible, but hypothetically, do I think it was possible that it happened? Absolutely not. There would have been a leak. There would have been a tape. There would have been somebody seeing or something. There would have been somebody coming out. Like there's no way that a conspiracy on that level could ever happen. That would be the the largest form of conspiracy in the history of the planet. Yes. 
No, it, 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 it literally happened. Time Magazine admitted it, that they controlled the flow of it. We could literally see in the fact of how they censored and how they portrayed. I mean, it's not even close. Pew Research talked about the fact that 95 percentage of the coverage of Trump leading up to the election was negative and something like right, 80 percent of the coverage of Biden was claims, positive. Two different claims right now, right? Do you want to make no, the claim the, that the, the election, that the actual votes were rigged or that there was me negative media coverage of Trump or Biden? Like, no, that, that, that's different. That's the original question I asked you. Wait, so what, yes, so what are we discussing that, right real now? Real quick, if I can explain, there seems to be some confusion. My question to you is this. If the people that shape the narrative are all going in on one side, do you think that would be enough to sway votes that could be able to sway an election? Oh, sway votes to sway an election? Oh, yeah, sure. Yes. Okay, sure. Yes, I'm not saying rigged. I'm saying sway. So if you have the people that are controlling the flow of information that are basically all in on one candidate, which is exactly what happened, you don't think that'd be enough to, in these swing states, sway 40 or 50,000 votes? It could. Why didn't they do it in 2016? Okay. Because they got arrogant. Because they believe they're bullshit. They believe. Okay. And do you wait, wait, now. So, do you understand now? So, this is the this is generally where conspiracy theorists fall apart. Is when you start asking because what what what, what the often again. Okay, I'm not saying you're a conspiracy theorist. The bane of all conspiracy theorists mind. is that they usually present some all powerful institution that's capable of delivering fantastical results. But then the problem is that it's usually a layman that's discovered some incredibly glaring error that they fucked up at. And then the obvious question becomes: If they're so powerful and they could do so much. How could they possibly lose 2016 if they're rigging the polls, if they're controlling the media? And then for you to respond, oh, well, then they just got dumb, LOL. Like, really? That's not, this that's is not no very satisfying. Than saying, then the, it would be no different than me saying, well, clearly there's no instance of police malfeasance of actually committing crimes against the general populace. Because if it happened, then the other police would convict them. Right? If, if they're not all powerful. The res Black Lives Matter can't be right that there's a system that protects corrupt police officers because surely... How would they know? The layman figured it out? This would be a well, massive the, conspiracy. Well, no, the, the way that we figured that out is through like third party independent investigations that determine whether or not that was the fact of the matter, right? So to determine- So like Pew Research saying, so like Pew Research saying 90% of the coverage of Trump Wait. was negative and 80% of Biden was positive. Pew Research? A third party, about? yes. Right, Crime? third party. Well, yeah, so, like, wait. That's here's a question. Are you literally here. arguing that? The, okay, wait. Hold on. Actually, first narrative? of all, first of all, can you send me a link to that? I need to see that. That ninety. Uh, I'll try to find it. Okay, because I'm going to go ahead and challenge. I'm going to say that piece of data is probably not true. That ninety-three percent okay. of the whatever was positive and eighty-three percent. That's almost certainly not true. Um, I'll try to find it, it. Now, it wouldn't surprise me if um, it wouldn't surprise me if the majority of the coverage was in favor of Biden. But that's a that's a dramatically different number, okay? But I'm just like for a top-down institution that controls so many different facets of life and so many parts of the media. Why did we hear so much about Benghazi? Why did we hear so much about the emails? Why was there so much reporting about stuff that Assange was leaking? Like, why didn't the media just squash all of this? Well, because it's different. It's what right? There's the idea of destroying the well or poisoning the well. It's impossible to constrain all the information that people would hear. But this would be so instead, under your you under your you paradigm. But under your wait wait under your paradigm under your paradigm well under your paradigm where all the media is controlled. Why wouldn't they be able to just squash these stories? I don't understand. Because this. there's the internet. Okay, then why weren't they able to do it effectively this time? The internet's only gotten bigger in the last four years. No, alternative like, media has only like gotten saying, bigger. Well, then so then like if we take this to the logical extraction that you're having, then everything the media says must be true. Right? They could never have something that was untrue that was willfully spread within the media because then... No, I think that there are things out. that the media does that can be fucked up, for sure. But then I rely, I'm so relying like on... the Iraq like, war. The Iraq war. Why did they ever leave anyone say that, wait a minute, these claims were bullshit? Why did they leave them? Why did they leave what? Why did they leave people talk about the claims that the Iraq war was bullshit? Wait, why did they... They were powerful wait, enough... Hold on, I'm just right? not understanding. Why did they leave people that claimed the Iraq war was bullshit? Right. Your argument is, well, if there was this conspiracy that could have swayed public opinion, then clearly they wouldn't have left any other comments. But the fact is, there was a conspiracy we know about the Iraq. No, no, no. Wait, hold on. I, this, isn't, this isn't the argument that I'm making. I'm sorry. The, the argument that I'm making is that if there are all these institutions are so powerful that they could rig the 2020 election, they're so powerful. How did we lose 2016 by like 20,000 votes? That's what I don't understand. Because and and why and how did and how did members of the establishment, so like the media that gave Trump so much coverage, even if it was unfavorable, and Comey himself come out and potentially sink Hillary Clinton's campaign? Why did you get members of like the institutions that came out and fucked the Democratic Party? It seems so weird. Because two things. One, because they're not going to even if you're trying to 
sway things in one direction. You can't completely censor all information. So the way you do it instead is that you let that information get out there and then discredit it, which is what we see the mainstream media and these tech companies do all the time. Oh, this is what Trump said, but it's clearly bullshit. Oh, that, that's, that's how they operate. And second is they didn't put their thumb on the gas or their foot on the gas as much as they otherwise would have because they believe their own bullshit that Hillary Clinton was dominating. That's why. And you can say, well, wait a minute, that's an insane conspiracy theory, but it's ignoring the reality that I think that you have to admit that social media and the mainstream media was overwhelmingly for Joe Biden. And we see a Time Magazine article that talked specifically about that, about how shadowy cabal had hundreds of millions of dollars that was controlling the flow of information and things like that. This isn't, this is Time Magazine. Okay. This isn't um... Alex Jones. Sure. All right. Oh, do we have any final thoughts? Or you guys can chat and then I can take off. You guys want to talk to each other? No, no final thoughts. I do appreciate I sincerely listen, Destiny, like for real. I know you probably dislike me and you say that all the time. <laughs> I've told people over and over, even though we massively disagree, you have been nothing but kind to me behind the scenes. When I didn't know how to record my own videos and shit, you let me rip your audio. So I have no hard feelings. I think you're an intelligent guy. I think you're wrong, but uh, you know, that's how I feel. So oh, yeah. thanks for talking think, with me i really appreciate it i think we agreed on everything pretty and at the end we even agreed on a lot of the college stuff so yeah i think i think we're good all right well hey you guys have fun peace out all yeah, right see you dude. the um the idea that like um Oh, was this the thing? About 8 in 10 Americans think news coverage favors one side, more so among Republicans. Percentage of U.S. adults say news organizations are presenting the news on political. Tend to favor one side, U.S. adults, 80%. Oh, dumb. okay, gotcha. This is, but this isn't really saying what he was claiming he was saying, right? <sighs> oh, man. The, um, oh, this is what the Washington Times, this might have been what it was referring to. Broadcast networks deliver 92% negative coverage for Trump, 66 positive for Biden's study. Oh my God, please stop. The country's major broadcast news media outlets were have never have never been more negatively biased against sitting president. A conservative media watchdog has concluded in its latest study. The Media Research Center has tracked broadcast network coverage of President Trump since he took office. Blah, blah, blah. The slant of coverage. Four years ago, the big three broadcasting evening newscasts tried to destroy Donald Trump. The big three. Is this the study analyzed all coverage um, of the two contenders on ABC, CBS, and NBC evening newscasts? Well, so we're just like, we're going to leave the largest member of media out of this, Fox News. Is it still the largest cable broadcasting station? But, um... Okay. Um... Isn't this like basically bright, bright? Yeah, maybe, I don't know. It found that Mr. Trump received 839 minutes of coverage, 92% of it was negative in content and tone. Mr. Biden received 269, and two thirds of it, 66%, was positive. I wonder if they have like a neutral or negative. Does this really make, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't this kind of make sense? July 29th through October 20th. This was of last year of 2020. When did Biden say he was joining the race? Is that really that surprising? And the airtime is relevant too. Yeah, Donald Trump was on news 840 minutes. Biden was only on for 270. Rob mentions he reads an outlet called the Epoch Times from the Wikipedia page. The organization produced a 93 minute that falsely a 93 minute video that falsely suggested widespread fraud in the counting. One interviewee, attorney Lynn Wood, falsely alleged that China had bought an American election vendor. Nice. Yeah, whatever. There we go. I don't know if that BX bullet person wants to chat. Um, 
I'll be right back, and then maybe we'll chat with, I don't, I don't know, or I'll go to sleep or whatever. We'll see. I'll be back one sec. <sighs> Jeez. Remember to hit that like and subscribe, and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed. What city was Malcolm X born in? Oh, Malcolm X City.